When we have to show an image in a web page, then we use HTML's IMG element. Now the IMG element is pretty good in downloading and showing images, but in its default setting, we cannot really control it. When provided with an image URL, it will begin to download it as soon as the element loads. This is a problem when a page has so many images and the user may not even scroll the page to look at most of them. This becomes an even bigger problem when the web page is being viewed from a mobile device and the device is running on a metered connection. To solve this issue, we can load the images only when they are visible in the browser's view by a certain amount. With this code example, you will learn how you can lazy load images in your website. But before that, I would like to request you that if at any point in watching this video, you think that this is helpful for you, then please take a moment and click on the subscribe button. This will make sure that my videos will reach an even bigger audience. So this is Visual Studio Code and the first thing that I will do is to add some HTML contents to it. First, let's add a bunch of IMG elements and load some images into them to see their default behavior. So IMG, now let's set an ID. So ID can be image1 and then we need to set the SRC value. I am going to use URLs of a popular wallpaper website over here so that we can see some kind of delay while the images are being downloaded from the network. So here's the first one. And now let's just copy and paste this image element and now let's have a different SRC values. So the image URLs have been changed and now it's time to change their ID too. Although we don't really need the IDs to load the images but we are going to need them when we are going to implement the lazy load code. We will also need to add some styling information so that we can place the images apart and to be able to scroll the page to see all of the image elements. So let's call the class name as image and also let's set a bunch of CSS values like display value, top margin as 600px, width, height and also border. And now let's set the class value for all of these IMG elements and this is going to be image. I will now copy this class attribute for the rest of the IMG elements. Now it's time to open this web page in a browser and see the default behavior. If you have the live server extension installed in Visual Studio Code, then you can simply right click on the code editor window and there will be a menu item called open with live server. This will create a local application and will host your web page and all the files inside it. So this is the web page and now you can see that while I'm scrolling, the images have already been loaded. Now, if a user decides that they don't really want to scroll further and they just want to either navigate to a different web page or they want to close this web page altogether, the images which have been loaded at the bottom or below the area where the user hasn't scrolled yet, the bandwidth is simply wasted because the user is never going to see these images. The best way for us to do is to never load the images that the user is never going to see and that can be done by lazy loading images. The idea behind lazy loading images is that we only load images in the IMG elements when they become completely visible or either become partially visible like by a certain percentage. And that can be done by using the intersection observer API in JavaScript. So I'm going to change the HTML content over here for all of these IMG elements. Instead of setting the SRC value, I'm just going to set an attribute and let's just call it data IMG. We will not be setting the SRC value initially, but we will be reading the SRC value from this attribute. We can leave the class and ID as they are. And now let's add a script element to write our JavaScript code. First, we need to create an observer object using the intersection observer constructor. So let observer equals to new intersection observer and this will need two arguments. The first one is going to be the callback function which will be called whenever the element is going to intersect with the viewport of its parent and the second one is going to be an options object. The options object is going to have the values like the root elements value, the root margin and the threshold which is pretty important. So the first one is the root and I'm going to use null over here because we want to use the browser's viewport and when we have used the value null then 
the browser's viewport will be used. If you want to observe elements which are the children of another element on the HTML page, then you will need to use the reference of that parent element instead of using null. And now let's set the root margin value around the parent and I'm going to set this value as 0px. And finally, we will need to set the value of threshold property. Now threshold is the ratio of area with which any element becomes visible in the parents viewport that we are observing. So for these IMG elements, I am going to set the value of threshold as 0.25 or 25%. This will make sure that when the image elements are visible in the browser's viewport by 25% of their area, then we will load the images into them because we don't really need them to be 100% visible. If the user is able to see a part of the IMG elements then we can assume that they are going to scroll down further and we need to load the entire image. Now it's time to create the callback function so the callback equals to a new arrow function and this callback function is going to have the arguments for the entries list and the observer object itself. When we are observing multiple elements, then this entries list is going to have the information for all of them. So essentially, we will need to iterate over this entries list and we need to handle all of the elements that we are observing individually. So entries dot for each and I'm just going to call this as entry. The first check that we need to place over here is to see if the element is already in the viewport or not and that can be done by checking entry dot is intersecting boolean value if this is true then the element is intersecting by the thresholds value in its parents viewport the second thing that we can check is that if we are working on the correct html element and that can be done by checking any identifiable information of the elements which we need to work upon now these img elements have the class value as image so we can use that so if entry dot is intersecting and entry dot target dot class name is image then we can go ahead and start to load the image into this img element first we need to fetch the image path which can be done by getting the value of this data img attribute so let image url equals to entry dot target dot get attribute and we can provide the value of the data img attributes name over here also first check if we have the value or not so if image url exists then what we can do is we can simply set entry dot target dot src value as image url now when we have set the image url value and the src attributes value then we can stop observing this img element because there is really no point in observing any element without any purpose also this callback function runs on the main thread so if we are going to observe many different kinds of elements then this is going to be a performance hit for the entire application so we should try to be careful while using intersection observer callbacks and when we don't really need to observe the element then we should not do that so we can call observer dot on observe and we can provide the element which we want to stop observing and this is the current element which we are iterating so we can provide entry dot target so our callback code is finished and our observer object is created the only thing which is left to do over here is to start observing all of these img elements by fetching their references using their ids so observer dot observe and let's fetch the reference of these img elements that can be done by document dot query selector and then providing the id which is image one for the first img element and i'm just going to copy it five more times and let's just change the ids for the rest of them 
and now it's time to see if our code is working all right so this is our web page and you can see that the first image is not yet loaded that is because it is not visible by 25 percent of its area which we have provided as a ratio in the threshold value now let's just start scrolling down now you can see that when it is visible by more than 25% of its area in the browser's viewport then it has loaded. Now let's just scroll down to see the rest of the IMG elements. So this is the second one. Let's scroll down a bit further and it has also loaded. Let's go again towards the bottom and this is how we can lazy load images in any web page. Now if a user were to stop scrolling down then the rest of the IMG elements will not load the image and the bandwidth of the user's metered or unmetered connection is going to be saved. So that's pretty much it for this short video guys. Do let me know what you think about it. If you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area. Also if you like this video then please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to this channel. This will make sure that you will always be the first one to get to know about new video updates. And I will see you in the next one. Till then, have a great day.